Hi everyone, back again for the, uh, for the difficult second album. Today, uh, a few people have asked about the potometer and the calculations relating to the potometer and how it can be used to measure the uptake of water. So, I'm first going to describe how the potometer is set up. Now the one that I've drawn here may be different to the one that's uh, in the notes. So. Uh, there is a diagram of the potometer set up in the notes. Um, this is one that I've copied from uh, an old exam paper. And actually the question about the, um, uh, about the water uptake is from that exam paper as well. We'll go through that towards the end. The setup for the potometer varies, but there are some common sort of themes that you'd expect to see in each one. And I'll talk you through that. So, what we can see here is a capillary tube. And that capillary tube is full of water. And in the water, uh, there will be an air bubble. And that air bubble is used to show, well, it moves. As the, uh, uh, as the investigation continues, that air bubble moves. And that shows the amount of water that's been taken up. These uh, are to the first sort of question about this. The potometer doesn't show the rate of transpiration, but instead shows uh, the water uptake. And the water uptake, well, that involves transpiration, so it involves the loss of water by transpiration but also uh, the consumption by the plant and that consumption is in two parts so the, the cells of the plant require water to maintain turgidity Um, and also, of course, photosynthesis requires water as well. So there is some uptake of water from the, from the roots, or in this case, through the stem, through the xylem, and up through the plant, due to turgidity, due to photosynthesis. In addition to that loss of water by transpiration, it's a fairly common question to ask why can the potometer not be used to measure the transpiration rate? And it's because of these two factors so, turgidity and the consumption of water for photosynthesis. Okay. Alongside the capillary tube, kind of graduated scale and that graduated scale will usually show the distance and it's showing the distance traveled by the air bubble over a period of time uh, as the water is taken up by the chute uh, other parts there will be some kind of water reservoir. So the water reservoir, uh, um, the water reservoir is used to reset the air bubble. So in this case, it's a syringe. In other cases, like the one in the notes, uh, it's a tap, and the syringe can be squeezed or a tap can be opened. Uh, that applies pressure to the water, and that moves the air bubble back to the start of the graduated scale for the repeats. And I'll talk a little bit about repeats in a moment. The shoot itself, um, uh, it's best to use a shoot rather than an individual leaf because that makes it more representative and allows you to, uh, uh, increases the reliability of the, of the results that you're gonna get. 
and that shoot is cut. Now, it's a little bit probably tricky to see from where you are, so I'll show it here. The bottom of the shoot is cut at an angle, like so. And it's cut also, uh, I'll show this, underwater. And that's really important. So when the shoot is cut, it's cut underwater, and that prevents any air bubbles from moving into the xylem. Because if there were an air bubble to move into the xylem, uh, that would block the xylem, it would break the continuous water column and prevent transpiration from taking place. Okay, so that's shown in here. The, uh, the chute is placed into the water that fills the capillary tube and then there'll be some kind of rubber seal that seals the chute in. And it's really important that that rubber seal um, is watertight and airtight and we'll come on to some of the precautions uh, in a moment. Uh, what else have we got here? I think that's that. So, the measurements that can be taken with the graduated scale, what we're trying to achieve is find out uh, the volume of water that moves through the plant that's taken up, so this water uptake taken up by the plant uh, as a volume in a given time. Now the calculation we're going to use later on is millimetres cubed per hour. And we'll come back to that. Now in some cases the graduated scale may show the volume but mostly and most of the questions that I could find earlier on the graduated scale was a measure of the distance uh, and that distance is used with two other measurements so or with another measurement sorry. the capillary tube you may be given either the diameter or the radius. Okay. If we know the diameter or the radius and we know the distance that the air bubble has travelled, we can calculate the volume of water that has been taken up by the sheet. If we know how long that takes or in that given time, we can calculate the volume in the given time. That's the setup. There are some precautions, and some of the exam questions will ask you for perhaps two of those precautions. And I've got noted down a few here for when setting them up. I've mentioned this already, but it's really important that, that rubber seal is tight. Okay, so any joints between the uh, between the chute and the capillary tube, or between the reservoir and the capillary tube, must be sealed. Uh, I've also mentioned that the, um, uh, the chute must be cut underwater at that angle. The angle increases the surface area and prevents the, uh, the xylem from collapsing. Uh, the leaves must be dry because if they were wet that would uh, perhaps block the stomata or perhaps increase the humidity which would affect the rate of uh, the water loss from the leaves by transpiration. There must be no air bubbles, we've mentioned this already, so no air bubbles in the chute itself. Okay, if there are air bubbles that breaks the continuous column of water in the xylem that is necessary for uh, the cohesion tension theory. Uh, the position of the air bubble needs to be marked at the start. Okay, so what we tend to do is place the chute into the potometer, all set up, and there is a, uh, a five minute equilibration period. An equilibration period just allows for the temperatures of everything to uh, become ambient, become the same as the 
room temperatures. Uh, and after that five minute period, the position of the air bubble is marked on the graduated scale. Perhaps, no, we'll say that, the, uh, the position of the air bubble is marked on the graduated scale, and then the time can begin. So over a given time, the distance traveled by the air bubble is measured. And this brings us to the calculation that we have down here. So, on the exact question that I found earlier on, it gives us some information. It tells us that the air bubble moved 7.5 millimetres in 15 minutes. It also tells us that the diameter of the capillary tube is 1 millimetre. So, we need to use an equation or a calculation to find out the volume of water uptake in that given time. So to find the volume, we use pi r the radius squared uh, times by the distance. This gives us the volume. The volume of water uptake pi r squared times the distance. So in this case, uh, pi is always going to remain the same. The radius is obviously half of the diameter. The diameter is 1.0 millimetres. So zero pi times 0 0.5 squared times by the distance. 7.5 millimetres. Now, this would give us the uptake in 15 minutes. We want to know the uptake in one hour. So, what we can do is calculate that and then multiply it by four, making that 15 minutes up to one hour. And if you do that, you should get a, um, an answer of somewhere close to 23.56 millimetres cubed per hour. The, uh, the measurements will be taken more than once. Okay, so it's likely a minimum of three repeats to uh, calculate the water uptake. And those, uh, the purpose of those repeats uh, is to increase the reliability, reliability of the mean. And I think that is everything. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I hope that was useful. Like I said yesterday, like and subscribe <laughs> if you can. Um, if you've got any requests for any specific topics, either from the Transporting Plants booklet or from any other booklets uh, throughout the year, um, we're all in isolation now. I've not got a lot of other things to do. So just let me know in the comments below the, uh, below the video. Anyway, take care, stay safe, keep washing your hands, and I will see you again soon. Ta-ra!